Well, it's official. I hope you're very happy with yourselves. Spotify cancelled archetypes! Well, God only knows what's going to happen now. Just as I was starting to turn meaningful conversation into action. Adobo? But who cares anyway? I think we know who the real losers are in this whole fiasco. Spotify. It cost them a measly $30 million to get those 12 episodes of Archetypes exclusively on their platform. $30 million for 12 of the greatest podcasts ever produced. Sophie has become a dear friend and someone who I think is so emblematic of strength that comes from embracing your humanity, even in the face of all these family and home and public pressures. Don't understand. I don't understand. Do you understand how easily Megan could make 30 million again if she just went on YouTube? She'd only need about, about 500 million views per episode. Harry and Meghan, Spotify ends podcast deal with couple. Why? Why, God? Spotify has ended its lucrative deal with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex for the couple to produce podcasts. I don't believe what you have done. A joint statement from Harry and Meghan's company and the streaming giant said they had mutually agreed to part ways. It's not you, it's me. Spotify confirmed it was not renewing Megan's podcast Archetypes, which ran for 12 episodes from August 2022 for a second series. The contract was estimated to be worth $25 million in late 2020. Oh, BBC are so boring, aren't they? Always pretending to be neutral. Put some adjectives in there. Eye-watering $25 million. Now, this story really caught my attention because, as a content creator, I think I can bring some fresh perspective to the uh, to the debate. I've been watching people give their uninformed opinions on Twitter and stuff today about this. And uh, I have to say this. I know that the official statement from Archwell and from Spotify is that they've mutually decided to go their separate ways and explore pastures new. But that's just the way people speak and the way companies speak when there's a separation, right? When a marriage breaks down or a girlfriend, boyfriend separate uh, a lot of the time. Um, you say no, we just it just didn't work out. We you know we wanted to go our separate ways. We we were we were on different paths, right? But m I think most of the time we know really that one side is more interested in leaving the agreement than the other, right? I think in this case, as being as objective as I can, I, I think it was not worth the twenty five million dollars that Spotify spent on Harry and Meghan's uh, projects. And there is there is no way for me, there is no way in hell that Spotify even broke even with archetypes. I think, I think initially they were inflating the ratings. Uh, we don't know the official streaming figures because if you go on Spotify, you can see how many streams a song has got, but you can't see the podcast numbers, or at least I don't know where to find them anyway. We know that in the first couple of weeks, they a lot of people accuse them of artificially pushing Megan's archetypes up to number one spot. It knocked Joe Rogan off uh, the top spot for a couple of weeks, but we don't know. I don't know if they artificially manipulated that, but the facts are that after those first couple of weeks, the honeymoon period, it dropped out of the top 100. It was really not doing very well. Certainly, I don't think Spotify have spent $25 million on any on having exclusivity over the rights of any other podcast that's not in the top 100 streams. I've heard idiots coming out saying, no, but they paid Joe Rogan $100 million, or Well, it turns out it's actually more like $200 million. Yes, that's true, but they're paying Joe Rogan $200 million for exclusivity over three and a half years to someone who's got a proven track record of getting millions and millions and millions of views on YouTube and billions of downloads of his podcast uh, on other platforms. And uh, since they've signed him, he's making like five, six episodes a week, getting some of the most famous and most interesting people in the world on his podcast, sitting them down for three, four hours sometimes. And you've got billions of people listening to him. He's consistently number one. Yeah, okay, they've paid $200 million for three and a half years. God knows how many episodes, how many hours, how many billions of hours of people listening to Spotify that's going to buy them. They are definitely earning a lot of money with Joe Rogan. I, as a simple YouTuber, understand that nobody should be paying me $20 million because they would not be making a profit. I think what a lot of people don't understand, you know, 
you you commoners, you you non content creators, you pedestrians, <laughs> but <laughs> patronising twat. In all seriousness, though, I think a lot of people perhaps don't see it from the perspective of a content creator. Basically, I think initially Spotify went in there thinking they could make a quick buck out of Megan because she was very much in the limelight. You know, everybody was talking about her. Maybe even people would watch her podcast to hate on her. The only reason this relationship has broken down is because Spotify have realised that they can't make a profit out of Harry and Meghan. They just can't sell them. It's a dead horse. There is no... Whatever you think about Harry and Meghan, they are not in any position to walk away from a $25 million contract because they want to pursue, I don't know, a different path. I think you would... Oh, I don't think. No, I absolutely know. If they started making videos or podcasts on another platform where they weren't being paid for exclusivity, there's absolutely no way they're making $25 million for 12 episodes. Make 12 podcasts on YouTube. See how much money they make. We'd be able to see the numbers there and we would be able to objectively uh, revise how much their podcast is worth. And it wouldn't be $25 million. I don't care how much of a fanboy you are. I mean, look, there's 75 different articles covering the story here. Some of them are left-leaning. Some of them are right-leaning. Some of them are those horrible fence sitters. But the facts are the facts. If you don't believe me, head over to the Ground News app yourself and take a look. You all know how thorough I am in my research, and that's why I rely on GroundNews.com, the world's first news comparison platform, which allows me, should I wish, to compare and contrast thousands of sources covering the same story. It is genuinely a really useful app, particularly when I want to get to know the perspective of people who think differently to me, because I want to get inside their heads and tear them to shreds in an argument or in a YouTube takedown video. Ground News shows its readers who's funding the coverage of a given news item, how reliable the sources are with the factuality rating, and where the sources covering the story in question fall on the political spectrum. So to stay fully informed on breaking news, compare coverage and avoid media bias, go to ground.news slash Daniel Boland and sign up for a free trial when you download the app on your phone or subscribe for unlimited access if you find it as useful as I do with the link in the description. For the time being, however, let's head on back to the good old reliable BBC. His Majesty's British Broadcasting Corporation. The podcast deal was one of the major commercial agreements the couple entered into after quitting royal duties and relocating to the US in 2020. Yeah, do you remember when they quit all their, all their duties? Because Meghan was going to self-destruct. If she had to cut another ribbon, she was just going just gonna to end it all. When it was announced in late 2020, the prince said it would... Bring forward different perspectives and voices that perhaps you haven't heard before. How many of us feel battered? Archetypes saw Meghan speak to high-profile figures like Serena Williams and Mariah Carey about the stereotypes levelled against women. And at 26, women who were not married became known as thornbacks, which was a reference to a kind of skate, like an ocean skate, that had spiny uh, spikes on its back. I now unironically miss archetypes. It brought me so much joy. A statement from Spotify and Archwell Studio, the couple's content creation label, said they were proud of the series they made together. And why wouldn't they be? Then threw some pool floats in. By the way, the inflatable pizza slice proved to be a big hit. Which I found online, and I kid you not, the one without pepperoni was a few dollars less than the one with pepperoni. And yes, I'm still talking about the inflatable pizza float for the pool. Why? <laughs> In December, Archetypes won. Archetypes won the top podcast award at the People's Choice Award in Los Angeles. At the time, Megan wrote, I love digging my hands into the process, sitting up late at night in bed, working on the writing and the creative. Working on the writing and creative. And I love digging deep into meaningful conversation. And at least open the door for really meaningful conversation. Because I think once you turn meaningful conversation into action, Game changer. And I loved digging deep into meaningful conversation with my diverse and inspiring guests, laughing and learning with them. It has been such a labor of love. As much of a fan as you might be of Meghan Markle, I I've got to say, what what <sighs> meaningful conversation? No, I listened to all of her episodes of Archetypes. There was not 
one minute that you could call meaningful conversation in any of them. It was very heavily scripted, banal chit-chat. All of it. Uh, absolutely all of it. I'm, I'm not exaggerating at all. Diverse and inspiring guests. They were divergent, as in most of them seemed to suffer some sort of neurodivergence. They all had personality disorders. They certainly weren't diverse. 100% of the guests on Archetypes were women who have had varying degrees of mediatic success. About as diverse as a Jelly Roll concert. The Wall Street Journal quoted an Archwell spokeswoman as saying Megan was continuing to develop more content for Archetypes audience on another platform! Yay! <laughs> when the agreement with Spotify was first announced, it was billed as a relationship which would produce several series, but in the end, only one materialised. So that means, that means that the $25 million that Spotify gave to Archwell, to Harry and Meghan, was uh, with the intention that they would make several projects with them, that they'd do uh, other podcasts and other programmes and stuff. So... Somebody from Archwell clearly sat down with somebody from Spotify, pitched a load of ideas, and they were just like, no, that's, that's terrible. I don't want to do that. That won't work for us. No, I'm sorry. No, stop. This is real-life Alan Partridge. Um, um, youth hosteling with Chris Eubank. <laughs> what if we made something about Nelson Mandela? Because he was really inspiring. No, Harry, we've, we've been over this. You can't keep using Nelson Mandela's ghost to pretend you've got a career. Monkey tennis? American media reports suggest the royal couple failed to meet the productivity benchmark required by Spotify and therefore wouldn't be receiving the full value of the contract. Oh no! Anyway, look- Since splitting from the royal family, Harry and Meghan have looked to capitalise on their global fame in order to become financially independent. Yeah, we noticed! That has included a multi-million dollar content deal with Netflix and Harry's huge contract with Penguin Books, which has already produced his autobiography spare. So this is the thing. I'm not sure if their deals with Netflix and Penguin are, you know, there are conditions in those agreements that mean they have to produce several more, I don't know, programs or books or whatever. Uh, I mean, that's what you would expect, really. It's like an album deal, isn't it? You know, you, get, you have to make five albums, and if you don't, you don't get paid the full amount. And I just wonder, as I've said from the beginning, how much content do they have left? Smell my chicken, mother! Anyway, I think that's enough for today's video. After a, a little hiatus, a little hiatus from uh, the Harry and Meghan bullshit, I, um, I'm not fully back on the bandwagon, but... Uh, <laughs> There you go. I thought I'd keep you. I'd give you a little update, just in case you'd forgotten about them. Hmm? All right. I'll uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, guys. Like, share, subscribe, and all the rest of it. See ya. Would you like me to lap dance for you? <laughs>